So there are many pressure units. Uh, there are probably like two, maybe three that we tend to use in chemistry, um, but there are more than that. So we're just gonna go through them today and talk about their conversions a little bit. So millimeters of mercury is sort of the first one that was developed. It's the first way we sort of measured atmospheric pressure. Uh, a barometer was used, which you can kind of see here. Um, I think this is technically a manometer, <laughs> um, a, but uh, basically you have some gas in here with a uh, like known pressure, or you could have a known pressure on the outside. I mean, really the known pressure could be either one of the two. And then you measure like the millimeters of distance that the mercury travels to compare. And so that's why the the symbol is millimeters of mercury. It's because you're you're actually measuring the the distance of like the top of the mercury to the bottom of the mercury, or I guess, because it's like this U shape, so it's like top to top, but <laughs> really it's that difference there that you're measuring. So you can see that the mercury sort of goes up to here and to here. So you measure that distance to be able to compare the pressure of the two gases. Uh, the guy that made that up, his last name was like Torricelli, I want to say, um, something like that. So sometimes we call it Tor, uh, but millimeters of mercury was sort of our first way of measuring atmosphere. So from there, we there's been a lot more that have been developed. Um, atmospheres or ATM is the symbol. That's one that we very, very commonly use. It's sort of with the the standard like sea level zero degrees Celsius is one ATM. So it was just sort of assigned uh, that one ATM would be um, would coordinate with that uh, like level of the atmosphere and the temperature. Um, standard temperature and pressure. So STP, that's a term you're going to hear a lot. And uh, it's it's just a a way at which we measure gases, standard temperature and pressure. It means zero degrees Celsius and one ATM. When we do calculations with temperature in this unit, we typically convert to Kelvin. So in order to get from Celsius to Kelvin, you add 273. So zero degrees Celsius is equal to 273 degrees 273 Kelvin, sorry, Kelvin is not degrees Celsius is though. Kelvin is more of a scale. It's a measurement of um, energy. We call it the absolute temperature. You can't have a negative Kelvin. I mean, you can't have a zero, uh, you can't have a negative Kelvin. Zero Kelvin is the coldest temperature, I guess you could you could say, but like I said, Kelvin's not really a measurement of temperature. It's more of a measurement of energy. So basically with no energy, if an atom had absolutely no movement, it would be at zero to zero Kelvin, but that is sort of a theoretical number. Um, even the most, the coldest molecules still have a tiny bit of movement. The conversion between ATM to millimeters of mercury and tor, because remember tor and millimeters of mercury are one to one. Um, but ATM, if ATM is one, that means uh, millimeters of mercury is 760. So that's the conversion factor that you're gonna use to convert. And I'll show you examples of those in your notebook. Um, as far as your like mole goes, when you're converting to grams, you use grams to mole, like from the periodic table, the molar mass. When you're converting to molecules, you use the Avogadro's number, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. If you're converting to volume at STP, the constant that you use is 22.4. So that is a number that you should know. Pascal is another way um, that we measure pressure. Uh, the symbol is PA. However, we typically use kPa kilopascals as our um, as our unit, uh, just because a pascal is is very very big um, when you compare it to ATM. Um, uh, one pascal is is equal to one Newton per meter squared. So it was actually created by a mathematician, not a scientist. Um, we do use it. It's We use it less often than, than we use ATM or millimeters of mercury, but it is one that we do um, use on and off. Uh, the conversion is 101.325 kPa equals one ATM, which again equaled 760 millimeters of mercury, which also equaled 760 tor. So 
all of these numbers are equal to each other. They can all be used as conversion factors. Again, we use kilopascals because pascals would be 101,325. That's just a really big number. So 101.325 is just easier to work with. So we use kilopascals, typically not pascals. Um, American units here in the United States, we use PSI, which stands for pounds per square inch. Uh, pounds and inches are not something that we use in science. Therefore, we also don't use PSI in science. However, if you are a diver, um, usually the um, the the gas in your the air in your gas in your like tank that you wear on your back, that's measured in PSI. So when you see your um, when you when you look at your, they're called like. <laughs> secondaries and stuff like that. So I don't, I, don't, I can't remember what the actual name is, but when you um, look at it, it, it's measured in PSI. It's on a little, it's in like a little um, dial. Uh, we also do PSI in tires. So if you like look closely at your tires, um, usually there will be a PSI label there. This one actually also has a KPA label. So that's pretty neat. Um, but PSI is something you'll typically see on your tires too. Um, uh, one ATM, which is equal to 760 Torah, which is equal to 760 million meters of mercury, which is equal to 101.325 kPa, is also equal to 14.7 pounds per square inch. A lot of times when you Google that, you get 15. We're going to use 14.7, a little more specific in here. Again, so the um, value for PSI is 14.7. That is equal to one ATM for conversion factors. Uh, in your notebook, I will show you uh, examples about how to use these as conversion factors, so uh, stay tuned for that.